And welcome to the third hour of American Agenda. I'm Bob Sellers. And I'm Heather Childers. And we're now joined by our family of co-host, chairwoman for the Nevada State GOP and Republican strategist, Amy Tarkanian. A GOP strategist and Newsmax columnist John Burnett will eventually join us. But also, there you have the author of 13 and a Half Reasons Not to Be a Liberal, of course, that's Judd Dunning. Welcome to everyone. And John, like I said, will uh, join us shortly. The sequel to it's got to be called 13 and a Half More Reasons, right, Judd? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Oh, we've got another book in the in the in the pipe, people. There's so much to talk about. I know. I was going to say you got to pick a number every day. Oh, we got to change the title again. All right, former president. Okay, uh, for exponential, I like it. Uh, former President Trump's uh, revival tour, if you will, starting tomorrow in North Carolina as the keynote speaker at the Republican Party's national convention, kicking off with uh, plenty of speakers. But the main question surrounding the event is if Mr. Trump will reveal another run for the president in 2024, uh, didn't he tweet? Yes, tweet, say that, something that's coming earlier? up later in the show. So okay. a little oh. tease about that. He okay. did say something about it. Okay, uh, <laughs> so that's a tease right there. So, uh, the, the, Amy, let's uh, talk about what can we expect from the president? What do you think he's going to be talking about? Uh, what do you think his purpose is? Wow. Well, I think he actually is going to have a lot to say, especially now that Facebook once again has um, solidified their stance and keeping him off of their social media platform for another two years until January oh, man, 7th of, uh, after the midterms. Um, so he's going to talk about that, I'm sure. Um, there was also a tweet that was retweeted um, by uh, by one of his members at uh, oh my gosh, Joseph Miller, Jason Miller. Jason Miller. And he, yes, and he confirmed my question when the uh, blog was taken down or the website was taken down from the desk of 45, if it was a precursor to a new social media platform. Yeah. And he did confirm it. So I'm sure we will hear more about that. So that's exciting. And I think that this just further solidifies the fact that he is basically the head of the Republican Party and um, the Make America Great Again movement is still strong. Yeah, Chad, what do you think? Look, uh, I don't. I think most people didn't even know about it because Trump is so canceled now that I actually had to Google Iran to find out he was speaking in, in North Carolina. Right? It's amazing how repressed uh, information about Trump still is. If you look at the news, it's really buried down there. Look, I think North Carolina is be exciting. I mean, look, he won clearly in North Carolina, like 50.7 to 48.6. North Carolinians love him. By the way, I'm from the Char Hill State, so hello to Highlands, North Carolina. I grew up in a town of 400 there. And, you know, North Carolinians knew. I mean, look, he, he built a strong military. He came through in his promises. He turned around the economy. A lot of North Carolinians are very rational people. So I, I don't know if he's going to leak it out that he'll be... Uh, we all know he could go there, but I think he might step aside for anybody else. I think he really would put America first. Uh, and that's why, why we love President Trump. Heather, am I, I? I feel like North Carolina keeps dis, getting closer and closer. Yes, and, and, and don't closer. you love it? Uh, I do like the Tar Heel <laughs> State. I, I do. Yeah. I do. Now, it'll be interesting because obviously we also know uh, that Senator Richard Burr is retiring, as we spoke about earlier. So lots of folks are throw, have thrown their hat into the ring to try to run for uh, the Senate seat there, not the least of which was the possibility of uh, the former president's daughter-in-law, Laura Trump. So it'll be interesting to see if anything is said about that as well. Yeah. Uh, John, yeah. good to have you here. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow night, the president? And by the way, we will be carrying it live. We'll tell you more about that, but it'll be live here um, on Newsmax. So what do you think, John? I think it'll at least go an hour and a half, right? That's what he owes us. It's been so long. It's been a while. The thing is, and there's so much material for him to cover, right? It's not, to, it's not about the, the, uh, the 2020 election. It's going to be about the current economic environment, right? You know, speaking directly to the working class, American, and the forgotten men and women all across this country. Namely, gas prices alone, energy policy, in terms of wages, in terms of small business, in terms of even Vice President Harris, uh, 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 convening business leaders to create jobs in other countries. This is crazy. Nothing speaks more to America first than, than the creation of jobs 
onshore. So he's going to attack so many policies uh, coming from the Biden campaign. He's going to actually make the argument why the GOP is the only party that has American interests first. Yeah, something interesting to me, Amy, Facebook uh, came out today and said, uh, you know what, uh, we're going to, it's not going to be forever as a ban on the president, but it'll be for two years. But what I find interesting about that, that takes him through the midterms at a time where mm -hmm. he could actually have more of a voice, uh, certainly on Facebook. Sure. And they, they intentionally chose January 7th as the day after January 6th as the so-called insurrection took place at the, on the Capitol on the day that they confirmed the election for President Biden. So this is just their way of saying, hey, we're in control of you, buddy. And they're, they're basically, they're, they're being jerks. I mean, let's just be honest. Um, so I think that the president should actually have, President Trump should actually have a big sign instead of saying, make America great again or America first. It should just say, I told you so. Because everything that Joe just relayed is coming to fruition, coming to the forefront of everything that he actually implemented and tried to put into place during his one term is now we're finding he was right. Yeah, and one thing, Judd, that strikes me is Facebook, big tech, social media, they really are political now. I mean, there's no, you can't mm -hmm. doubt that by some of these, uh, like Amy was just saying, January 7th, mm -hmm. wink, wink. Yeah, well, look, we just, go, I just tweeted out we should boycott Facebook for two years. I, I'm, I'm, I'm disinterested anymore. And by the way, we've gone from like thousands and thousands of views to like four or five views since I started talking about election integrity in the fall. We're trying to get on to other people. I'm calling Arizona mom saying, retweet this for us, please, because I'm writing about the vaccine. I mean, there's an, we are deeply shadow banned right now. It's why it's great to be on your, your network here, you know? And it's ironic, right? Uh, you know, Fa Fauci still gets to use Facebook. Uh, did he cause an insurrection? No, he actually caused death. I mean, right? And there's a really mm -hmm. imbalanced level there. And what's happening with Parler, which is uh, the management's rolling over, Twitter is isolating the algorithms there. It's really, really serious what's happened to free speech. What DeSantis is doing in Florida, holding them liable, is a great beginning, but we need to continue to march against big tech. It's never been so serious. All right. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.